Virtual tabletops have become an essential part of D&D and just tabletop RPGs in general for gamers, especially in this past year or so with the pandemic. So today, let's talk about how we can utilize virtual tabletops, and in this case, specifically Foundry Virtual Tabletop, to make your games go smoother, faster, and easier. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, this is Joe from the DM Toolbox. Before we get started today, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also click that like button, help me to make some more great videos for you guys. Also, if you wanna follow me on Twitter, you can do so at toolbox underscore DM. And you can also search me up on TikTok. Uh, if you search up DM Toolbox, I am there as well. Let's talk about virtual tabletops. Now, I know I mentioned in the intro we're gonna be talking mainly about Foundry. We're gonna look at some modules today that can help make your game a little faster, smoother, more fun for your players, and just kind of cool all around. But before we do that, I wanna talk just about the benefit of virtual tabletops in general. There's a good variety out there. We have Roll20, we have Fantasy Rounds, we've got Shard, we've got Tabletop Simulator, and of course we have Foundry VTT. All of these are great options. It's just a matter of what you prefer. I prefer Foundry, but Roll20 is free to use. It's got a pretty quick and easy learning curve, and you can just jump right in, and it's probably got the biggest player base. Fantasy Grounds is another nice one that has been around for a while, a lot of good content on it, a lot of people are using it. There's a lot of third-party publishers that publish their stuff to it, so another benefit there. Tabletop Simulator is a cool program that lets you feel like you're sitting at a table with a 3D environment, and you can do a lot of neat stuff with that. Shard's got a very quick, easy learning curve, very simplistic. If you just want to supplement the tele our tabletop experience virtually, it's a great one to just jump in. It's intuitive, easy to use. Foundry is my personal favorite. Uh, I'm a bit of more of a technical guy, and I like a lot of the automation features and how the community has been able to mod it to make it you know, more suited to every individual person's needs. So it's very customizable for you, the player, and you, the DM. So every one of these has their ups and downs. Now, Foundry probably has a little bit more of a learning curve than others. I wouldn't say it's drastic. Some people feel it's big. Personally, I, I was able to move from Roll20 into Foundry very, very easily. It's not a huge jump. And Foundry is about 50 bucks. You buy it one time. You can either host it yourself on your home computer, or there's hosting services out there that you can use, such as the Forge, or the one that I personally use is Foundry Server, which I like because it gives me a little bit more control over my server. And I, I've been using them since the very early days. So I'll link that down below as well in the description for you guys. Let's look at Foundry itself today though, because that's what I use, that's what I'm most familiar with. I have done some conversions for AAW games in Foundry. I'm hoping to do some more conversions for them and maybe some other companies in the future. So I've got quite a bit of experience with it. Now, when I do conversions for companies, I tend to assume that you're not using any modules because everybody uses different stuff. So I build those to run in vanilla Foundry and then you can add whatever you want to it. Now, when I run games though, I use quite a few modules. There's a lot of cool stuff I like to do. So today we're gonna to look at a few of my top favorite modules I use and maybe a couple honorable mentions as well if we have some time. I don't want this video to run too long. It easily can. But we're gonna hop over to my desktop here and I'll share my screen with you guys and let's take a look at some cool stuff. The first module I wanna show you guys today is the D&D uh, Beyond Importer from Mr. Primate. This will allow you to import your characters from D&D Beyond right into Foundry. This has a lot of uses because a lot of players just like to maybe create characters in D&D Beyond. It's very easy to do so, and you just want to be able to pull those in. Or if you're like me, where maybe you split your time between uh, online play and in-person play, you can use this to not only uh, bring the character sheets into Foundry, but then upload them back to D&D Beyond and keep them in sync. Because like my party, we play in person maybe once a month and then the rest of the time we play online. So this allows us to use our D&D Beyond sheets and keep everything in sync. Now you can also use Beyond 20, which just allows you to roll straight from D&D Beyond into Foundry, but uh, there's you lose some benefits of Foundry with that. So it's up to you, but I'm gonna show you how to use the D&D Beyond and Border tool. 
So here we have our player characters, and I'm going to add one more to this. So I'm going to add a character. Uh, I'm going to do a player character sheet, and it doesn't matter what I name it. And I'm going to come over to D&D Beyond, and I have this character here, my Minotaur Paladin, Lactose the Intolerant. I'm going to just copy the URL from him, and go into here, and I'm going to paste the URL, and I'm going to start my import. And you're going to see it saying gathering data, uploading avatar image. It's going to do a few things. It doesn't take very long, and it's going to be done. And there he is. You can see him right here on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And now here we are. We have him here. It's got all his skills, all his inventory, all his features. Everything is there, ready to go. His spells, everything syncs up. Now, the one thing it won't have is a very good token. It's going to have the same portrait picture that you're seeing here is going to be his token. So um, you can either use uh, Hero Forge if you want a top-down token or maybe a nice portrait token. They have some really cool tools with their subscription now. Uh, we'll kind of probably cover that in another video. But there's also a module called uh, VTTA, which has a few, a lot of different functions. As uh, it lets you sync monsters and spells and things like that from D&D Beyond into Foundry. But it also has this tokenizer uh, thing right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this VTTA tokens. Here's my image, and it creates a token for me right away. And it's got different layers and stuff like that. I'm going to hide that layer, so all we have is the circle. If I wanted to hit the time, there's some different options and stuff like that here. But we're just going to use this token. So I'll save that, and what happens now is when I drag him out onto the map, he'll have a nice round token, just like that. So that's the first one. That's D&D Beyond Importer. Definitely recommend this one for anybody who you know uses D&D Beyond or has players who do. So let you get those characters in nice and quick. Next up is a module called Combat Carousel. Now, this is a really cool module. It gives a little bit nicer interface for tracking your initiative order in combats. Generally speaking, when we run a combat in Foundry, we have this vertical combat tracker. We go to this fist icon, and we track the stuff right here on the left side. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to get some, we're going to go to a map. Let's get into a map. I'm going to go to area one here, and I have this map, and I've got my player tokens here. Let's uh, do this. Uh, we got our player tokens here and we've got uh, some monsters and stuff like that. Let me reset some health here for us. And what we're going to do is we're going to roll some initiative for these guys. So I'm just going to grab, I have another one here. So we'll grab all these and we're going to roll some initiative. So I select all these. I can right click and clicking on this will add everybody to the initiative tracker. Now if you never use Foundry, players can also individually add their tokens by just right clicking their own and clicking this. But it's nice to be able to do it for everybody quite easily. And you see here, we get this right here. This is Combat Carousel. Now, over here is our normal tracker. People would click here to roll their D20s, and you know it would just go down the list here. But the Combat Carousel, everybody can see this. Uh, you, know, you can limit what information they can see about the NPCs, but they can all see the initiative order. So everybody can click on these little dice, and you see how they animate to roll their initiative. Me as the DM, I can click right here, and I can roll all my NPCs, or I can obviously uh, roll individual ones. Or I can click here and just roll for everybody, including the players. So we're going to do that now, since we don't have any real players uh, playing. And it's going to roll all my dice. And by the way, the 3D dice is a module called Dice So Nice, which I'm not going to cover today, but allows you to customize your dice and stuff. Really cool. And we have our initiative order. Now, you notice it hasn't really put them um, well, in this case, they are kind of in order, but generally speaking, it, if they, they it might end up being out of order, but we're in round zero. And when we click next, it's going to start our initiative, put everybody in order, and we're ready to go. Now, you can see here I'm tracking health, but we can track uh, different stats here. So track resource, uh, we can do health, we can do uh, primary value, or you know, resource primary, or, or whatever we want. There's all these different variables that we can track there, but generally speaking, health is a good one uh, to track. So... We can see our health in each of these. So that's Combat Carousel. Uh, you know, right here we can click, uh, you know, the next turn or the next round to, to rotate through. And if players, there's a, an end turn macro players can use as well to end their turn and automatically uh, tell the tracker, I'm, I'm done, go to the next person. Next up is a module called Argon Combat HUD. Now, Argon is a cool little user interface for combat and stuff that has come out kind of somewhat recently. There was another combat HUD that's been out for a while that a lot of people use and recommend, and it's great, but this one definitely beats it up, and I love this. This is kind of my new favorite jam. So let me show you this. 
So what a player can do is they can right-click on their token and they can click these double swords here, and that will bring up the HUD. Alternatively, we have the double swords over here that we can use to enable it as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click here, and you can see this HUD that pops up down here. Depending on how much stuff you have in there, it could get a little bigger, and there is a scaling option for it in the configuration settings. But I'll show you this one here. So we're going to click on this wizardess, uh, or actually, no, let's click on the, on the minotaur. And let's click on use item. And here you can see all his items in his inventory, his healing potions, his war hammers, all this stuff is here. And all I have to do is click an item to use um, and it'll attack. Now you'll notice it's saying you must target uh, a token before attacking. And the reason is that's a feature I've enabled. There. I'm going to show you in another module in a little bit. But let's go ahead and target this guy so that we can attack him. And I am going to go ahead and use that mall. I'm going to roll. Let's go over to here so we can see. And I rolled a 22, it tells me it hits, and it gives me uh, some damage. So uh, all this stuff you're seeing in the chat menu that's showing me it hits and giving me the damage is another module that we'll talk about soon. But you can see this HUD itself is pretty darn cool. Uh, if we wanna cast spells, for instance, if with our sorceress here, she can click on cast spell, and you can see here's her firebolt and all her spells broken out by level. We have first level spells, we have cantrips. If she's a higher level, you'll see them all broken out. And if you're a type of class like a druid or a cleric that has um, prepared spells, so you have you access to the entire class spell list, you can choose an option to only show prepared spells here, which I would definitely recommend. And you can see the spell slots down here and everything too. So I can just click on this, I can roll, and it's gonna cast her firebolt. And you can, you're gonna see a little animation there, which we'll talk about soon. But this is the, the combat HUD. We also have things like, uh, let me go back over to here. Uh, we have things like, um, uh, you know, dash or ready or hide or disengage are, are all here. Do you see how it's broken into main action and bonus action? Reactions will be on here as well for reactions. So uh, anything that will fall into those, you'll see when you click on these. So like free actions, here are my free actions that I have. Um, you know, uh, features, here's my charge feature. So everything that your character can do is on there. And you can still pull up the character sheet like normal by either double clicking the token or there's this little kind of briefcase icon here that'll bring up your character sheet. So this is the Argon Combat HUD. Uh, when I first showed this to my players, they freaked out, they loved it. You also notice here it's gonna track movement. Each of these squares is a square of movement. So watch as I move, it starts t dropping those squares off. And when I get to uh, no more, uh, when I get to my last square, now it goes into yellow. So now I'm using my dash action. So I'm into the dash stuff. And maybe if I'm a rogue and I have double dash, uh, it'll bring me into the double dash now in the red. So it will track all your movements. So this makes it really nice when you're trying to go back and say, well, how many squares did I move this turn? It's all right there on the screen, you can tell. You know, one thing I did forget to mention with this interface, and I'll show you real quick, is th these are quick bars over here. So if I open up his character sheet and go into his inventory, I could drop Let's say the mall here on the left and I let's say I drop my Warhammer on the next one over here and you'll see there's three sets of two tokens the one on the left is for action the one on the right is for bonus actions what we have now is we have if I, I click this radial here and this is already selected now the mall is here ready to use and if I go to the middle one now I'll have the Warhammer ready to use if I had something in the right one it would show up in the bonus uh, section but I don't have any bonus action items all right next up Let's talk about some of these things you saw in the chat log when I was attacking. First, let's talk about the fact that we were targeting, that it's telling us whether we hit or missed, it's calculating the damage, and you'll also notice it was auto-applying the damage. Uh, generally speaking, uh, what you would do is uh, you can click on uh, the target like this, and you can use these buttons here to apply damage and stuff, which I believe is part of, uh, um, I wanna say it's part of combat utility belt, maybe where you can apply damage. But that's an extra step. So MIDI QOL uh, is a module that allows you to simplify your combat workflows. And I'm going to actually go into the settings of this one and show you. So we're going to go into configure settings and we're going to go to module settings and we're going to scroll down to MIDI QOL. And I want to show you my setup here. And there's a lot. You're going to want to play with it and, and take, a, take a good look at it. But uh, what we want here is <clears throat> these are a few basic things uh, that you can check out. But what I really want to show you is the workflow settings. So I say, you know, always auto roll damage uh, on hits. And then uh, same thing for players. And then we go into this workflow section. This is really what's cool. 
So auto target on template draw. So if you, let's say, cast a fireball, when you drop the template on the screen, anything in that template's gonna be auto targeted. So they'll, you know, they'll take damage and stuff, or they'll prompt for saving throws or check to see if that's hit and everything. Uh, auto target for range target spell attacks, I leave that at none, uh, requires target to be selected. So the reason I say always is because if you don't do that, you can still roll an attack roll without targeting and then you have to manually apply damage. So it'll just pop up and remind you, hey, you can't do this until you target something. So I find that useful. Uh, you know, check player reactions and same thing for the GM. If somebody gets hit, uh, it'll pop up and offer them any reaction uh, actions that they have, spells or whatever reactions they might have. It'll say, do you want to use this? And it'll pop up and ask them. So that's kind of you know helpful. Uh, auto check saves. I definitely do that because that's also going to, uh, you know, let us pop prompt us. To, uh, this right here is going to prompt us to save this. Let me roll that for you. Uh, that's another module that I have installed. And it's going to basically, if somebody has to make a saving throw, it'll pop up in the screen and say, you know, you need to roll this constitution saving throw. And if they pass, it's going to, and there's damage involved, it's going to do a, uh, you know, half damage automatically. And then this will say, you know, sh uh, basically show me the results of the save. Uh, display the saving throw DC, things like that. And then the damage, uh, I say, you know, yes, uh, plus damage card. I want to see the damage. That was uh, this little thing right here is what that means. Uh, applying immunities lets us, you know, do things like, um, you know, if they have immunities, it'll half damage and stuff like that for them. And then I enable the concentration automation, which will, if they cast a spell that requires concentration, it'll automatically mark their token for concentration. And if they get hit, it'll automatically prompt them via this, let me roll that for you, with a constitution saving throw. And if they fail, it will remove the spell or whatever from the table, and it'll drop the concentration effect. So super, super useful. So that's all the stuff that this can do, and you kind of saw all that happening when I was making these attacks, but I'll do one more here just to show you again. Uh, we can go into use item, and we can go into our mall, and I'm gonna, you know, I can, by the way, I could skip this step where it's asking me, uh, but I like to have it on there, so I don't skip that, but that is an option in there. But now you can see that it says I hit, it rolled the damage automatically, and it applied the damage, and you see the damage come off. The other thing too, and the reason why, if you wanted to skip the advantage of you can, is I do have another module, and I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head. I wanna say, it might, it might even be part of MIDI if I remember right. But see this plus and minus here? So let's say I rolled this attack normal and I meant to roll with advantage. I can come back now and hit plus and it will roll uh, the advantage and it'll pop it, put it right up there. So now I've rolled with advantage. Or if I meant to roll this one here with disadvantage, I can click the minus and it will roll it now with disadvantage and give me the results. So you can totally do that. Um, so that's kind of helpful. All right, next up, I know you've been probably sitting here wondering, you've been seeing these little animations of the mall hitting and the firebolt going out. What is that? Well, that's a two-part answer. The first part is a module called JB2A, which is a module pack of just tons of animations that you can apply to your abilities and spells and effects and everything. It's just this package and you can apply those things. You can even uh, drop animations on like your background and stuff like that, which I'll show you. And uh, the um, other part of it is a module called Automated Animations, which presets up a bunch of those for you so you don't have to manually set up everything. So you get the two of those, Automated Animations and JB2A, and you can do this. Now JB2A does have a free version, and it also has a patron-backed version for about four bucks a month or something that gives you an expanded list of modules, or expanded list of animations and color options and things like that. So to show you, you're already seeing here, like when I cast my Firebolt, for instance, how that worked out, but I'll, I'll do that one more time for you just so you can kind of see that again. Um, I'll cast this and we'll see the Firebolt go. So there it goes. Um, or I can also, let's see here, let's do a lightning effect here. Let's use that first level spell slot, do a lightning effect. So there you go. The other thing you can do with this, like I said, is uh, you can, this will also work for like area of effect spells and things like that, sleet storms, you know, uh, fireballs, all sorts of stuff. But let's go to another map that I have here and I'll show you a few more things that I've done with this. So uh, I just had this scene here with a brazier and some torches and I was able to drop this, these hot coals and these smoke icons on here. And uh, I just put them on it as, you, know, you can see here, I just put them on as uh, tiles. So I just found ones that worked and I just dropped them on there. 
and it makes it kind of just come to life and makes it look more like an animated map. Same thing with these torches. I just dropped that same smoke effect and resized it. And the way I do this really is I can click on this uh, open folder here. I'll go into my modules. I'll go to JB2A and I have here this library pack of just all these cool effects. So I have all these spell effects and cantrips and then I have all these generic ones uh, and all this cool stuff. So uh, if I wanted like an explosion one here, I can find a cool one. I just grab this camera icon version and I can just drop it on the map. Bam, there it is. It's going to keep going now because this is a tile. But you know, these are the type of things you can do as like a spell effect or something like that. Uh, here's, I'll try this one here, see what this one does. Oops, that one was not the camera icon. There you go. So just all sorts of neat stuff. Yeah. Uh, and there's a ton of options for it, you know, in here. I mean, there's just a ton, a ton, a ton of cool stuff in here. So this is definitely worth a look. Okay, we're back at the first map here, and I want to show you one last thing. You may have noticed some blood on the screen earlier when we were hitting this guy. So let's take a look at how I did that. Let's go ahead and hit this guy. And watch for the blood. Oh, I probably missed him that time. Ha, ah, we missed. Uh, let's, let's try again. So we're gonna hit him, and there we go, natural 20. And you see the blood come up. Now the blood, I haven't set up, wow, I hit him for a lot, uh, 25. Uh, the blood only comes up when they drop below 50 hit points. That's how I have it set up, but you can do it for all the time. Uh, and you'll notice too now, if I start moving this token around, I have it set up so that he'll trail blood with him wherever he goes. So you can also set that up so that they make these kind of bloody mess around the floor when they're walking. Uh, you also have the ability here, let's say I want to bloody her up a little bit, I can click right here on this little blood icon and it'll start throwing blood on it. And when I want to clean it up, I just click this no blood and bam, it all disappears. It'll also fade out on a timer as well after a little bit. So that is a module called Splatter. Uh, formerly known as, I think, Blood and Guts, but Splatter's the new version of it and it is super cool and just a fun thing. I don't think I've actually, I think I just started using that. I don't think my players have seen it yet, so that'll be a fun surprise for them next session. So that's it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you got some benefit out of this. Do me a favor, let me know what modules you guys use when you play in Foundry. Are there any I didn't cover here today that you feel are pretty essential? There's a lot that I use that I didn't cover today, but these were just the ones that I felt kind of enhanced the experience the most. So let me know what you use. Maybe I can cover those in some future videos. Let me know what you think of these ones that you saw today. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and until next time, roll those dice.